whenever these thoughts arise, whenever you recognize that these are not your real thoughts, you have to go, okay, I'm not going to try to stop you. These thoughts are out of my control. They came out of nowhere. I didn't want those thoughts, but it came, it came up. Okay. I accept it, but I'm going to work around you. I'm going to work around you, bitch. You're going to write down a list right now. Okay. You're going to write down a list of what you're going to do when these deceptive brain messages occur, the urges occur. And what are you going to do instead of acting on the, on the binge? So instead of acting on the binge, what are you going to do instead to weaken that neural pathway, to weaken that habit that you have? Remember, this is going to be a lot easier if you do all the other homework. Okay. You don't have to be in this situation as much if you do all the other homework. So do not do everything you can earlier so that you don't run into this as much or it won't feel as difficult to do. I'm going to explain it in a different way. Totally different explanation based on Jack Trimpey, this guy who wrote a book called Rational Recovery. He says that addiction comes from the part of the brain that is older in evolutionary history. This is the animal brain, the lower brain. It's what makes sure that we stay alive. It's what's in charge of our survival, makes us want food, water, sex, oxygen, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, it's automatic. It's unthinking. It's irrational. You can't reason with it. When someone is addicted, the animal brain falsely believes that the addictive substance is necessary for survival. So like, oh, binging is important for survival. It's a, oh, I gotta do it. Like it drives the addicted person to the substance as though it was just as vital as water or oxygen. Isn't that crazy? Like, hello, why do we even have this part? I mean, can it kind of like upgrade already? Any thoughts or feelings that encourage binge eating is not really your voice. This is what Jack Trimby says. Any thoughts or feelings that encourage the binge eating is not your voice. That is coming from here, the animal brain. All the thoughts that you have that support quitting the addiction or the addictive behavior, those that's from your true self. You got to understand this. This is so crucial. This is so real. This is the real you. The real you resides, resides, the real you lives in this newer, more sophisticated part of your brain which is, which developed more recently in evolutionary history. So this is your consciousness. This is your self-awareness, identity, reason, memory, intelligence. It controls, you know, how you move your muscles, how you swallow everything. Your animal brain can only send messages urging you to binge, but the true self is the one that controls what's going to happen. So don't argue with this animal brain. It's not rational. It's not going to listen to you. Just recognize it. Let it be, let ride the wave and it's going to soon taper off the neural pathway the voice is going to weaken and disappear this brain even though it's an older evolutionary brain it can be so freaking clever and very manipulative it'll say things like oh, come on it won't hurt to binge just one more time oh, come on you can work it off tomorrow and then start over monday or you're having a hard day you need to relax you deserve it you did so well for three days come on it can sound so rational for a freaking lower brain, but it, you know what? You just got to think of it as a, as, as a little manipulative, manipulative little kid that's having a tantrum. That's going to get, do whatever it takes to get what it wants. No matter what crazy things the lower brain says, you got to relax and listen to those thoughts and go, I'm not going to make you go away. That's fine. I don't need to argue. I don't need to fight you. I'm not even going to grab my journal and write about my feelings right now. There's no need to hurry like, and find other ways to distract myself. Just going to sit in it, maybe go do something else fun or that's useful and be sitting in it. I hear you. I know you're there. Listen with detachment until it fizzles the fuck out. I'm going to let you die. Die. It didn't start by something that someone said, or it didn't start by something that I said to myself. It just kind of like popped up and this desire just popped up, then treat it this way. Treat it as, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay much attention to you. Cause the more I pay attention, the more I get entangled in it thinking, oh my God, it's real. Oh my God, that's really me. I have so many problems. I'm just gonna give in so, I, so that it can just stop. So I, I'll stop getting tortured. Then you're strengthening that urge again. You know what I mean? You're creating that habit. You're keeping that habit every time you give in. Hey, if you give in, that's okay, but just try, try, try for just 
five minutes to go do something else that requires some strategy, that requires some kind of intelligence so that you're engaged and doing something productive and actually moving you towards some kind of a goal so that you feel better about yourself and you feel like you're moving along in life. And if you still need to urge, that is okay too. That is okay too. That's right. It is okay. At least you tried and you are starting to break this away, weaken it. You're doing it little by little and it makes a difference. Every time you break it a little bit, it makes a difference. It's going to add up. Okay. You know, what's crazy. Eckhart Tolle, the author of power of now Oprah's like favorite author. He said, the human consists of two inner selves, the conscious self, the real you, the you that exists only when you are rooted in the present moment and the unconscious self that constantly pulls for your attention is very, very powerful. Okay. Most of us have spent decades thinking that we are this unconscious self and we have strengthened our unconscious self, but you got to strengthen this conscious self so that you stay in charge. Most of the time, this is how you will enrich your life and it will be the biggest accomplishment of your life. Can you believe that's what Eckhart Tolle said? Being in control of your mind is the biggest accomplishment of your life. So there's nothing wrong with you, my, my bunnies. We all have to make it our responsibility to make this in charge.